if you think of yourself as a computer, okay, this is the hardware. Your body's a computer. We have all these different viruses running. And what we'd think is, oh, you know, if I just keep installing new software, eventually it'll get rid of the virus, right? But it doesn't matter. You can install all the new softwares, the productivity software, the business software, this kind of software, the good habit software. If you have a virus running, it's just not going to click. And we never stop and ask ourselves, what virus is running me? And then let go of it. Okay. And this is what you did here. We brought up a lot. You know now how to let go. Instead of running away from yourself, learn to embrace yourself. I even use this stuff sometimes while out. If you ever get anxious, boom, base of your spine. Start taking some deep breaths from the base of your spine. It immediately grounds you. Next time you're triggered, instead of quickly escaping, pause, base of your spine, and just start feeling whatever's there. Be with it. If you just add this to your way of life, it will change everything. Low level, apathy is, oh, there's no hope. And we either have this in life, but what's very interesting is you need to also audit the different areas of your life. You might actually have a lot of hope in life, but when it comes to a certain goal, there's no hope. So I've seen this in, uh, in business, for example. Someone's like, oh, you know, yeah, hope in health, hope in this, uh, but business, you know, I failed all these other times. I'm probably going to fail this time anyway. What's the point? This state usually comes after a lot of hope, despair. That's the pattern. Hope, despair. It goes well a bit, you fail. Goes well a bit, you fail. Goes well a bit, you fail. And at one point you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not even going to try anymore. You're, yeah, I won't get the hope, but at least I won't get that same despair, that feeling of being disappointed. If you try even like, say, going to the gym. I go to the gym a bit, I give up. Go to the gym a bit, give up. Go to the gym. You know what? Fuck this. I'm just not going to go to the gym. Okay? So we have pockets of it. You might be very hopeful in areas, but not in some. And then, of course, you're not going to take action. If you know you know what, I'm just, it's just gonna be another thing I give up on. Why the fuck would you do it? Okay, so for someone in this level, it's all about sparking up that hope again. Trust me, if I told you, hey, think about it. Think about that one area where you feel really blocked, okay? Could be health, wealth, relationships, you name it. You keep failing, failing, hope, despair, hope, despair. And I come up and I tell you, listen, it's not your fault. The reason you've been failing and keep failing is this external factor. That's going to give you some hope. Wait a minute. You know what? It's not your fault. Um, you're failing because this thing happened to you. This person said this to you. You don't have the right advice or something. It's like it's someone else's fault, not yours. You're a victim. That's why you keep failing. That inspires some hope. Telling someone they're a victim who's in apathy is amazing advice. It's not linear but it's what moves them up. What does it move them up to? Grief. The land of victims, victimhood. Is being a victim healthy? Should you hang on to this and live in this state? Of course not. <laughs> but coming from apathy, this is a big move up, right? A big mistake, and I've talked about this in a, a recent video I put out, is people aim too high. Oh, I want to go all the way to feeling amazing and at peace. No. Go for the next level up. Baby, step your way there. Work your way up the ladder. Once you're in grief, once you're a victim, now there's a little bit more hope. Now you can tell someone, hey, you know what? Take responsibility. You don't want to tell someone in grief to forgive, though. Right? You know all those people who screwed you over? Like, their grief is kind of like the whining, and, and oh, but you know, it's too... Uh, like, I would, there's some hope, but that person did it. That's why it's not working, you know? I feel like, can you forgive them? What is that going to do? Reinforce grief. Oh, yeah, forgiveness. You're right. I should. No, no, no. No. That's the point where they should start. One, can you take responsibility? What if it's actually all in your control? Oh, but that's scary. Where do they move up then? To fear. Or, hey, doesn't it piss you off that someone screwed you over and is blocking you? Don't you get mad? Yeah, fuck that person. That's right. Get mad. Good or bad? Advice. You move up to anger. That's actually good. Okay? You go up. For someone who's in apathy to start crying, even in terms like resistance feeling, is actually amazing. It's a re you, you move up, you release. But then they get hooked on the crying. And at that point, you're like, stop being a little bitch. But that's horrible advice for someone who's in apathy. Do you start getting it? The different advice? Different levels? Now, when you're at anger, 
Now you can forgive. Hey, use all this anger for motivation. Fuck that person. Prove them wrong. If you hang on to that too long, it'll eat you up inside too. And now at this point, hey, can you forgive them? And then you can move up into courage. Right? You start taking some action. Now there's that belief, you know what? I'm taking action. I think I can do this. It's no longer coming from this place where it starts eating you up inside. You start feeling good about it. And then what happens, the mind kicks in. Hmm, taking action. If I keep taking action like this, think of all the approval. Think of what will happen. And then you go into desire. The land of the mainstream ego. Right? Oh, I'm going to take action, and I'm going to show all these people, and I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get money, and approval, and travel, and all these things. But this will also eat you up inside. You sell out on your authenticity. Let go of that. You move up to purpose. That's when you discover what is authentically within you, who you actually are, what you authentically are inspired to do in life. A lot of people have no idea. You might have had a glimpse during the death meditation. And then you move up to love. The worst writing, sorry about that. Love. And this is where you're in that state of all acceptance. You embrace it all. This is the process of transformation. We all have a default, or you could say a habitual state. Okay, so if you look at this, I'm sure you can resonate with all of them, actually. You're like, oh, there's a little bit in, all, in me. But there's one that you feel most of the time. What state do you find yourself in the most? Are you someone who's very angry a lot, who's very fearful, very feeling sorry for themselves, cry a lot? You're just kind of numb, logically living in your head. Uh, you take some action, but you just kind of tiptoe and dabble around. Or you're just fueled, oh, ego, desire, got to look cool, got to be cool. Or, oh, I'm kind of finding what I'm, I'm digging in life. This is my purpose. This is my path. Well, you're up there. Which one? So we have a habitual state, but then we all have pockets of this. And you'll go to different levels. Like you might be in a level of the ego, and then something happens, and boom, you're in fear. Or you're in anger, or you're in grief, or even in apathy. But the difference between, you could say, a pocket... And the default is that you'll fall into fear, but it won't last. Eventually, you'll find your way back to this. Or you could be in fear and you move up to purpose. You do the death meditation, but then eventually you find your way back to that. So we all have this default that we find our way back to. Okay, Someone even in purpose could shoot down to grief, but you find your way back. Okay. Now, biggest mistakes is there's different advice for each level different tools for each level, different intentions for each level. If you use tools for desire down here, it's not going to work. If you use forgiveness down here, it's not going to work. It's going to hurt you. Remember what I said, any piece of advice can help you or hurt you. And this is a big problem in, uh, I mean, another problem in today's mainstream self-help world is there's all these different videos with all these different advice out there, right? And we see it, and we have no map. We're like, oh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And you see people using all these tools in the wrong way. They use it to hurt themselves. You need to categorize it. You need to be very aware of what goes where. The same as we were talking about before, you know. If you're down here thinking like, oh, you know, positive challenge. Thinking positive affirmations. I need to make myself be positive. Is that a long-term goal? No, because what's it assuming? By default, you're not positive. But if you do it enough, you can gain a little bit of momentum to then be strong enough to face the negative stuff you need to let go of. Don't make this another requirement. This is a big trap, okay? Where, again, we have all these requirements to be good enough as we broke down. I need this, 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 and finally make it. Don't make this work another thing. Oh, and you know what I also need? To let go of everything. Oh, and I also need to let go of all the trauma. Oh, and I need to let go of this, 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 this. Don't use this as a form of self-hate. Any advice can help you or hurt you. The whole point of this work isn't to get you there. It isn't to get you to the finish line. It's to make you realize you've already passed the finish line. You already are there. 
It's supposed to allow you to let go of all these requirements we place, not become one. It's supposed to complement your life. You're here to live, not become your life. Don't be the person who goes head deep into spiritual work where you're spending like 24 seven a day, you know, locked up in your room, diving deep and meditating is an example. Should you do some of that? Of course, but you're doing that so you can partake in this world, so you can take actions, so you can live, so you can meet people, so you can get connections and experiences. So it doesn't take away from the action side, but it will make action a lot easier. Instead of trying to take action and battling all this inner resistance, this fear, and the things that are pulling you back, those, again, self-sabotage patterns, now ah, you're just pulled towards success. You've probably heard me talk about this before, the difference between work ethic and a work magnet. Have you heard this before? Yes? No? No. Okay. This is huge. If you think about work ethic or hustle or discipline, what does it imply? It implies that there is a part of you that is not, that basically that doesn't have your best interest at heart, right? It means that there's a part of you you need to discipline. There's a part of you that's pulling you towards failure. And unless you discipline that part of you, Unless you develop work ethic, you will be pulled towards failure. What's the direction of this work? Question the assumption, turn around. Why is there a pull art of me that's pulling me towards failure? Let go of that and you don't need fucking discipline. You don't need to discipline yourself because you by default have your own best interests at heart. And that's where you're pulled towards success. A work magnet, not work ethic. Like this program is such a game changer. The way everything's structured and the material, it's been already even for me, it's just been, I'm noticing a crazy change in, in the way that my whole life's like playing out. What you put together is just incredible. There's nothing like that. I've just jumped like a million levels. It's just been a complete 180 for my experience of existing. That's awesome <laughs> it's just been so huge in terms of so many of the things i'm finally understanding and realizing and epiphanies i'm having what you do is a huge inspiration to me and i think it's one of the most beautiful things you can give to another human in this entire world you saved my in life man. i'm telling you that's this is Sometimes all it takes is just one person who believes in you. Find people who are where you are in life and model them, work with them. I would not be here if I didn't have people who held me accountable. Wow. <laughs> I just felt a click and things are changing. This program was just top notch. Seriously, like this is a masterpiece. This is, this is perfect. Everything, the way it's set up, the live calls, like all the support from the coaches is incredible. It's, it's been nuts. I just had my test joy. This was the best decisions I ever made. Thank you for creating something wonderful like this. This program was phenomenal. This program was, uh, was amazing. This program has definitely changed my life. I know for a fact I'm in the right place. This is exactly what I was expecting from the program. It's been uh, spectacular. I feel really lucky to, to have found you. Thank you so much, Julian. It's, uh, it's worth every dollar.